shiny objects are everywhere, whether it's a virtual event or an in-person event, guest attention wanders. But there are secrets to reeling people back in and redirecting their attention to you and all the cool stuff that they came to learn. Listen for five ways to do just that. Inquiring minds want to know, how are entrepreneurs like us daring bravely to build a stage, ditch the sweatpants, and step up to the mic? How do we create our own transformative events so we can get our message out into the world in a bigger way that's not only profitable, but it's actually something we can be proud of? That's the question, and the answers are inside this podcast. My name is Sarah Faefer. Welcome to Green Room Central. Hey, it's Sarah. I have an invitation for you right now. You can join entrepreneurs from across the globe who share a passion for hosting their own events. Become part of the community that inspires and cheers you on over at greenroomcentral.com. So I've got five big ideas for you. The first is breakouts. And I think these are underutilized. It's really important for guests to socialize their learnings in the moment. And I think when you give uh, when you give a, t- a task, an assignment of getting into a breakout, guests uh, naturally have to get re-engage and get dialed into what's going on. And and this is important because if they were kind of like zoning out, <clears throat> you're gonna get them back in really quickly. And and so. It also gives you an ex- a, a, a way to get them closer to the other guests at your event. So you can say something like, hey, we're going to take the next uh, 10 minutes. You're going to get into uh, groups of five. You're going to have two minutes each. The person uh, who's traveled the farthest goes first. Uh, the person <clears throat> with uh, the most uh, pets is the person who's the note taker. And now you've set the stage. They know exactly what to do when they get into the groups. And so they they go into uh, either the, the Zoom breakout room or they pull their chairs together if you're in person and they're off to the races. And then you can say, hey, I want you to share um, your biggest aha so far and something you need help with. And this really works well because they're going to be like taking notes during that time of all of the other guests, they're gonna be like writing down who they met and where they're from and what their business is. Uh, and and they're also gonna kind of like reconnect with you because they're gonna be looking for those, uh, how do I fit in uh, rules of engagement for the breakout session? So I love this, love, love, love this uh, as an engagement tool. I think they should be used early and often in your events, I think you can switch up the group size, groups of two, groups of four, groups of of three. You can change up how many minutes each person gets, like five minutes each, two minutes each. Uh, I think you can switch up the questions, like, hey, I want you to share um, one thing you're struggling right now in your business and also like uh, <laughs> your uh, favorite business book and why. So I think that's, That's a great tool. I want you to use it more often when you're hosting events, uh, breakout rooms or breakouts, uh, whether it's a Zoom room or in person. All right, so next of five tips for you here on keeping your guests engaged. Uh, So the second one is rhetorical questions. I want you to be asking your guests while you're live with them, uh, you know, did did you write that down? Uh, are you tracking with me? Uh, raise your hand if if this is resonating. Um, who here has like all of those questions that are kind of like low risk to answer? I want you to be asking those during your presentation because the more often that you're doing that kind of stuff, uh, almost like a vibe check with your guests, uh, the more often they're going to kind of like be reconnecting, re-engaging with you and what you're teaching. And uh, we just need a lot, we need to string a lot of these micro moments together. And when we do, you will find that your guests 
have like just this much stronger, more intimate connection with you by uh, throughout the event and by the end of the event. And this is especially important if you're making an offer because the more, the, the closer that they feel to you during the event, uh, the closer that they feel to you, the more likely they are uh, to be a, a conversion for you. And, and so that's why stringing together more of these like moments of engagement throughout your event are so very important. Okay, so we've done number one, breakouts. Number two, rhetorical questions. Number three is direct requests to your guests to pay attention. <laughs> and this may sound silly, it may say, say, seem common sense, but uh, as one of my favorite mentors likes to say, common uh, sense isn't always common practice. I love that Brendan Burchard said that, Burchard says that, and he uses this tactic quite often during his events. Like, um, hey, I want you to write this down. Uh, those three points I just gave you are solid gold because, um, hey, uh, you know, like shake the shoulder of the person next to you and, and say like, <laughs> and then give them some sort of command. Uh, that, those types of direct requests uh, to pay attention, uh, they work. <laughs> so it's another moment that you can string together during your presentation to, to be reconnecting with your guests. All right, fourth one is gamification. Y'all know my, my, my position on this. I used to be a fun hater. I am like recovering. And I want you to really, uh, I, I want you to consider using gamification. Uh, it doesn't have to be cheesy. And uh, I think ways that I love to use this uh, are that it seem kind of, uh, I really don't like things that are cheesy. <laughs> uh, so the way that I like to use gamification um, is is not only not cheesy, but also not high maintenance. Uh, for, for an event organizer, for the event leader, you want things to be simple to, to fulfill on. And so things like, uh, if you're in a virtual event, using that prize wheel, you just Google it. Uh, and, and putting people's names on it who maybe had their cameras turned on, who maybe were the most engaged in the chat in the last session. You drop those names in the, the prize wheel, give it a spin, and, and send someone your favorite book. Uh, those are That's a super simple way during a virtual event to do engagement. Uh, in an in-person event, uh, something that's really easy to fulfill on is just having a stack of cool swag items or your favorite books on uh, on the podium and uh, you know or on your water table just off stage and in being able to throw them into the audience when someone asks a really thoughtful question or uh, when you notice someone cheering somebody on like reward the behaviors that you want people to be exhibiting during your event and and that's why I love uh, giving away prizes with the, the wheel during a virtual event for cameras on and engaging in the chat or asking a question in in, in a in-person in setting or, you know, like being the person who's encouraging and cheering people on. Uh, I love that stuff. So uh, gamification is our fourth. Uh, moving on to the fifth one. Hey, I don't want you to miss out. Did you know that this conversation always continues inside the Lynchpin Nation community? It's a free modern discussion forum exclusively for Green Room Central listeners that will have a profound impact on the way you look at events in your business. Get answers to your biggest questions, hear behind the scenes nuggets from event leaders, and get access to helpful templates, guides, and checklists as you start and scale events in your business. Be part of the daily discussion with entrepreneurs just like you. You can join for free over at greenroomcentral.com. I'll see you inside. I love this. Uh, so it I, I call it changing it up. So when you are working with uh, a live audience, whether it's in person or virtual, you need to mix up what they're seeing. And so that is showing videos, that is using a flip chart, that is using slides, that is just using you know your face, uh, that is gesturing, that is moving around if you're on stage. And, and I'll come back to all those things in, in a little bit, but 
what I want to underline here is that uh, we, we all have squirrel brains. We all are easily distracted. And so anything that you can do that is kind of changing up the, the medium or mode at which people are um, learning or where they're needing to like put their attention, the better because uh, it, it just is, it is like one more tool in your toolbox to kind of like reel them back in. If you think about TV and how often the frame, uh, the perspective like changes, how often the frame is changing, uh, it, it's, is super constant and it's uh that it's super high uh the i wish i knew the number for you in terms of like how many different frames are in like a you know a minute of of tv it's it's huge and and so when you think about that people are just like looking for shiny objects that's number one but also people learn things differently we need to really appreciate that so i personally love to learn uh audio visually. So I love to be listening to a book or I love to be watching like a, a video based course. And but there are some people who need to see it written down. And there are some people who need to hear stats. And there's some people who need to hear the the, the metaphor like it's it's kind of like this. And when we're, we're changing up the media that we're using during our events, whether that's slides with some stats on them or a flip chart that you're drawing like a framework on live in front of them or a, a video. It just helps kind of like reel more people in and and get more people to um, to understand what you're trying to teach. So in in Live Event Academy, uh, I had a student go through and afterwards, I was looking at the comments that they dropped in inside of, uh, you know, the Kajabi portal. I was looking at uh, the, you know, the the testimonial they left, and it was constantly about story. And that's another way that people learn is through telling of stories. And they just they just kept commenting on how they loved my stories, and. Uh, it really keyed me into the fact that that's how they relate and and uh, understand best. And so I just want to encourage you to really change up the change it up when you're you're teaching and be tapping into uh, the different ways people learn and see if there are props that you can be bringing in uh, that that help check those boxes for you. I'd also say that changing it up would relate to especially if you're um, in an in-person setting, changing up the space. So we just did a, a, a podcast episode with Jurgen Strauss about this, about how he changes the, the, the physical spaces that they're in, if they're brainstorming versus if they're uh, like strategizing. Uh, there's like different activities that they're, they do behind, but over the course of a day of a business retreat and they physically move spaces so that they're in a different uh, room. And I know there's also that whole like colored hat phenomenon of like telling people, hey, this is like a green hat time versus like this is a black hat time. I can't remember the name of what that uh, that theory is called right now. But uh, that that it, that's kind of like the same uh, vein that I'm going down here with this whole changing it up uh, as a way, uh, as a means of, of engaging more guests. And so I, I hope this kind of rapid fire format of giving you five ways of keeping guests engaged was helpful. Again, uh, I'm a huge proponent of breakouts, of asking rhetorical questions, of uh, direct requests uh, to guests to pay attention, uh, of gamification, and also kind of changing up the modality of, of how you're teaching throughout the event. I hope that's helpful. Thank you for listening to the Green Room Central podcast. If you love this episode, then be sure to please take a screenshot on your phone and post it to Instagram and be sure to tag at Sarah Faper and let me know why you liked it and what you'd like to hear or who you'd like to hear from in the future. That'll help me know what to create for you. Also, if scaling events in your business sounds like something you want to tackle in 2022 and you need a coach, Let's connect to see if one-on-one -on -one coaching is for you. 
just go to greenroomcentral.com. You and I can work together one-on-one throughout the course of the year and dive deep into the inner workings of your events and business. You'll receive mentorship, personalized feedback, and customized guidance to define your goals and achieve your next level of success. Go to greenroomcentral.com right now to apply. On average, I spend about an hour a day reading every month of every year. If you love learning on the go as much as I do, then go to greenroomcentral.com to get a free audiobook and a free 30-day trial of Audible, my audiobook platform of choice, and a sponsor of Green Room Central. I recently finished Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker and recommend it highly for any entrepreneur looking to access their next level. I appreciate your commitment to leveling up and learning the mindset and strategy of live events. Keep going, keep learning, and if you want to learn more, head over to greenroomcentral.com for show notes and all the links from today's episode.